if you told me that you could set up a fish room with 25 tanks and successfully breed over 15 different types of fish and shrimp in under a year for less than $500, I would have told you you were crazy, but I did it. Stay tuned to find out how. Hello everybody and welcome to All Things Fish. I'm Mike and thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to join me uh, on this journey uh, as we uh, you know, explore the world of Aquaria. And uh, if, you got, if you caught my first live stream the other day, it was a, I, would, I would call it a success. We had uh, way more folks than I expected to show up. Priscilla from Swiss Aquatics uh, was a great co-host and I'll definitely have her back. And we got into some great chat and, and we all did uh, some learning. We got into some talk about medications um, and, and that's one of my weak points. So I think uh, one of the next streams will probably uh, specialize in medications um, so that I can learn some more, you guys can learn some more, and we can all become better hobbyists. Uh, that'll be Tuesday night at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time uh, will be episode two of my live streams and it will feature Priscilla MK from Swiss Aquatics again. So I hope to see you there. Uh, but enough of that nonsense. Let's get down to business. Uh, so I've been in the hobby for 15 years. You guys have watched the videos. You kind of know my background a little bit, but I've never had the opportunity to set up an actual fish room, whether it be uh, working or just for show with a few display tanks. That's largely because I rented my homes instead of purchasing a home. But last year, in October, my wife and I bought our first house. So that's pretty exciting. It was a little bit older, so it needed some work, but it had a basement and it had a lot of potential for a fish room. So I started, I started looking at options and, and kind of tap, running the numbers. And, and you know, um, the, the prices on new equipment are insane. But luckily, if you are patient and know some people and keep your eyes open, you can score some great, good gear in excellent condition for pennies on the dollar. There, there's people setting up fish rooms and tearing down fish rooms all the time. And the aquarium equipment, as I'm sure you know, doesn't hold its value for a grab, uh, which is great, which is great. If you're looking to pick up some equipment, you can find some good used gear really cheap. There's a lot of gear that you don't want out there that's been used too that hasn't been taken care of that great. Uh, but uh, fortunately, one of my friends uh, who had been breeding everything from killifish to discus to main lake African cichlids and apistos and shrimp uh, for, for many, many years was he decided that it was time to get out of the hobby, which uh, offered me a great opportunity to snatch up his fish room. And uh, let's take a look at what I got where I went with it, and how I put everything together. So I had a pretty good friend who had been uh, keeping tanks for many, many years, and he had set up several fish rooms over those years, who had recently moved into a new house, and he went from you know 70 or 80 tanks down to about 40. And uh, after being in his new house for a couple years, he decided that it was time for him to downsize and shut down the fish room for quite a while. So he offered me up this deal, and he had uh, a wide variety of tanks, everything from two and a half up to 55 gallons. And uh, in total, I think I actually got about 30 tanks from him. Uh, 35 uh, is probably a closer number. Um, and just the cost of tanks alone, uh, varying from two and a half gallons up to 55 gallons, would easily have cost me over $500. Um, and not only was I able to get the tanks from him super cheap, but I also obtained all the sponge filters that he ran in those tanks to include some hamburger matin filters, as well as a Gemco LPH45 linear piston air pump to run the entire room, which uh, if you've looked at prices on those lately, it's about 200 to 250 bucks. So already, if I were to buy this stuff new, I'd be well over 750 bucks. But I bought everything from him for far less than $500. He cut me a great deal. And I not only did I get the equipment, but I got a ton of knowledge and some, some great tips from him. So I was able to get all these tanks from him, and I didn't uh, necessarily know exactly what I wanted to do with them. 
and I didn't exactly know what room I was going to put them in. But uh, after getting all this equipment, uh, loaded up into a U-Haul, drug it to my house, threw it in the basement, kind of sorted it, organized things, figured out uh, what kind of direction I wanted to go. Uh, I found this room. There's a room in my basement. It's roughly, oh, I don't know, maybe eight by 10 or so. Um, and it seemed like a good option to, to temporarily make a fish room until I decided what I wanted to do for sure and if I wanted to go bigger or not. So I found this the, this room in my house. I decided I wanted to paint it. So I ran to Menards and or Lowe's, Home Depot, etc., and got a gallon of paint for I think it was 20 bucks. And I had a roller already. So I started painting this room. And things were, were looking nicer already. Um, obviously, it, it's not the type of room. It's in the basement of a house that was built in the 20s. So it's pretty old. So I wasn't looking for perfect. I just wanted something that I would be uh, more comfortable in and enjoy a little bit better. And So I kind of cleaned it up a little bit and we got the rooms painted and then started kind of moving tanks in and testing things out to see just exactly where I thought I might want to put things. So here you can see I started taking these 15 gallon tanks that I got from him, which are great for breeding by the way. I've bred everything from Maltese to guppies to shrimp uh, to jewel cichlids in them and and I sat them up and I had this room that I was able to put tanks in so who's gonna wait to fill them up and so I went ahead and got some tanks set up and filled them up so that I could get them going and and you know have some fish going while I built the rest of the room so I had some tanks in place and instead of just having you know air pumps and airlines running all over the place part of what made this deal so good was that he included the entire air loop with his Gemco LPH 45 linear piston pump that he used to run all the sponges in his tanks. So I was able to modify that air loop slightly to fit into my room and it really didn't take much, a couple elbows and a couple cuts here and there, uh, but he already had the nickel plated uh, self tapping uh, airline mounted into the PVC. So I didn't even have to, to burn my time doing that. I had all those all the little valves, uh, which in themselves, I, they're, they're not cheap. They add up, especially when you have 50 to 100 of them. And I was able to build this air loop uh, in my room now uh, to include, uh, you can see above the door there, there's more or less a, an exhaust or a blow off valve. Um, so finally got all that air loop together for the time being. It wasn't perfect, but I knew that for the foreseeable future, for the temporary time frame that I wanted it for, that it would work just fine. So I got the air loop set up and I had tanks in the water and started uh, to put things together a little bit more. And uh, so I had those six tanks kind of kind of running, cycling, and I, I had all these other tanks. I had three 40 breeders, I had a bunch of other tanks, and I didn't exactly know how, to, how I wanted to lay out the room. So I went ahead and I took some masking tape and just started kind of taping things out on the floor. Uh, I knew I needed one rack for the 40 breeders and then I had these eight acrylic tanks. Um, so I kind of, I drew up a design for some stands and I'll build, uh, I'll include another video down the road of how I built those stands so you get a better look. Uh, maybe it's something that you want to replicate or, or you know, uh, modify a little bit for your own uses. So I started laying out what I wanted to do, where I wanted things that would give me uh, maximize the number of tanks I could have in there while still being able to walk around and work comfortably. And then it's a fairly small room, so I knew I wanted to just heat the room instead of individual tanks. So I went to Menards and I picked up a little room, uh, oil heater for 30 bucks and started grabbing. Every time I went to the store, I grabbed a bag of pool filter sand that was like five bucks for 50 pounds. Uh, and I got some wood. I got a bunch of two by fours and before Corona, two by fours were cheap. Now they're absolutely insane, uh, but it's definitely doable. And I started making stands. So here you can see uh, I'm putting together some stands that would end up being a 40 breeder rack that would hold three 40 breeders. Um, and these would later house uh, some multifaceted shell dwellers and a couple different species of rainbows. And uh, originally I thought I wanted it over here by the door, later changed my mind. So you'll notice in the videos that that actually changes places. Additionally, um, I wanted to, I built the stands so that I'd have enough clearance to, to be able to reach into the tanks fairly easily. Um, so so kind of did uh, some test measurements along the way and that worked out just fine. 
I tested the space heater that I got in the room and it was able to keep the room at a comfortable temperature uh, even in the middle of winter. So that worked fine for me. Uh, it was excellent. I think I spent 30 bucks on it. Um, definitely well worth the money for the size of room that I was using. Now your, your mileage may vary. Your requirements may be a little bit different. But now I had some tanks filled up. They were ready to go. The room was heated. So I started picking up fish. And uh, so I, like I said, I had those eight acrylic tanks and I started kind of laying out where those would go. Here you can see the, the rack of 40 breeders got moved over to the other wall so I could test fit uh, where these little eight acrylic tanks were gonna go. And each one's about 15 gallons. I actually received them super cheap. Um, there was a university that, that had a bunch of these acrylic tanks and my buddy picked up a bunch of them and he had more than he could use. So he cut me a great deal. So I got, uh, got those in there, kind of mocked things up and then started building the stand that would hold those. And I used more or less the same design that I used for the triple 40 breeder rack. And that's uh, basically just simple, uh, either two by fours or two by sixes, whichever one you feel comfortable with. Uh, the, the strength of a two by four is sufficient. However, uh, two by sixes kind of give you a little extra peace of mind. Uh, and for the, for the, you know, negligible cost difference, peace of mind is always great. So started putting these together and, and kind of fitting tanks in there to see how that was going to play out before we finally got it in place. Uh, I, since these were acrylic tanks, I wanted the entire bottom of the tank to be supported. So I went and got a sheet of plywood for 20 bucks and a sheet of foam for another five or six and threw that together and I was able to get my tanks set up on there. Now you will see that these are plumbed. Um, the university had them set up for more or less an auto water change type setup. And, and I, uh, I plumbed this to an extent that you'll see a, a little bit later here. Um, but I only used it for draining. I didn't use it for filling. Um, I use a, a lot of RO for, for these tanks based because of the, the fish that I was keeping in them. So I, uh, I fill them by hand, uh, more or less using a, a, to a pump and a, a tote full of RO. So you can see uh, the room had tanks set up. Uh, the room was also used for storage. It had this weird, it was that shelved kind of foundation that you often see in some of those older houses. So I was able to put storage up behind those tanks for now. And then on, I went on Amazon and got some of these two foot linkable LED fixtures. I think I got 10 of them for 40 bucks or so. Uh, and I was able to mount those in the stand over those 15 gallon acrylic tanks. They fit in there uh, quite nice. The light was more than sufficient. I'm able to grow low light plants with them, mosses, etc. Uh, and they're up out of the way linked together. And, and they worked, uh, you know, for the cost, they worked, they worked really well. I would definitely recommend them. Uh, so I had the 340 breeders, I had 615s, and then I had these eight acrylics that were all set up, but I decided that wasn't enough. I wanted to maximize the space that I had e even more. So I built a rack that would actually sit on the lower ledge of the fish room uh, above the 15 so that I could put more tanks up there. Uh, again, same design, uh, two by fours, two by sixes, some construction screws, and some three eighths inch grade five bolts. You could go with grade eights if you had the extra money and wanted, again, it's kind of like the two by four versus two by six thing, just the peace of mind. Uh, but I think grade five worked just fine in this application. And uh, here's just a few quick clips uh, where you can kind of see uh, myself putting stands together. And then it was time to move the stands into place, test fit them. You can see here, they fit just fine over those 15s. I gave myself a, an ample amount of room to work without having the tanks on the top shelf being way up in the air. Um, so again, I put another sheet of plywood. Like I said, add up another 20 bucks and it seems like a not, it's a lot, but I added up things over time and this all worked out to be 25 tanks in a room for less than $500. And you can see where things are, are kind of, the room's closing in, things are filling up, the room's closing in. I was able to use the top shelf uh, on the, the new shelf that I built for some storage. The middle shelf, I, I was able to uh, test some, some different size tanks in there. I had some other acrylic tanks. I tested some 10s in there, some 20s, just to see how they fit and if they'd work out for me. Uh, and fortunately enough, it did. And then you can see that I used, uh, before I ended up set tearing this whole thing down, to, to build my new fish room. You can see where I used uh, storage on one side and then the left side there I used for green water and to raise out some fry.
And again, here, like I said, you can see the green water in the, the tank. That's a 10 gallon tank on the left uh, with a five and then a two and a half. I used those for hatching rainbow fry out and raising those up until they were big enough to, to go into a larger tank. Had lots of options for storage. Again, because of that shelved foundation design, I had storage behind the rack uh, as well as on the shelves that I built. Um, and then I, was, I left enough room off to the side that I was able to climb up there and there's enough room behind that rack that I can actually walk uh, back and forth across that ledge uh, to get any supplies that I need from behind there. And uh, this, room, this room progressed and I ended up breeding um, some multifaciatus shell dwellers, several different species of rainbows, uh, many different varieties of guppies and endlers as well as three or four different colors of neocaridina shrimp. And uh, I would say the, the fish that I, that I put in this room, like I said, I had about 25 tanks running by the time I took it down. The fish cost more than the hardware and the equipment, and it really wasn't a ton of, a ton of labor. Um, so, so we kind of got to look at the stands, we got to look at the work area, and then uh, they had this little almost workbench type thing that I used. I just used to uh, put some storage underneath there that I keep my food and some of my water conditioners and stuff in, uh, and then I hung my nets up on the wall. Uh, I put my laptop there. I do some shipping there. I've got a laptop, a label printer, so I pack my stuff up at that little desk when I ship plants or fish out. Um, and then I'd actually made a drop off of my air loop uh, so that I can set up either live food cultures or, or temporary tanks, quarantine tanks, right there on the workbench. Uh, so, and then uh, it was always continuing. You're always trying to make things better. So, like I said, I didn't plumb these acrylic tanks for auto water change, but I did plug them to make them easy to drain. Uh, so I, I ran the plumbing and then I made, just made a quick disconnect where I can put my python hose uh, at the bottom of the, the plumbed line there that they all uh, end up running into and that goes out into the floor drain. So just a, a quick uh, piece, they're, they're slip fitting so they just slide together when I want them on there, take them back off and uh, again the, the python just fit right on there and worked great. Uh, after a year, um, so like I said, uh, this room was up for about a year. I was able to breed, you know, 15 or more species or variants of, of fish and inverts, both, uh, like I said, shrimp, uh, guppies, rainbows, multis, a few other odds and ends here. Um, but the time had come to tear things down. So I moved, uh, started NPN tanks, started distributing fish and plants to some of my friends a, and some other folks in the area where I could potentially recover them down the road if I wanted to keep that species again and stacked it all up in what would be the new fish room and here's kind of a teaser of that room I've got a lot of work to do in it but I did do epoxy on the floor got to do some plumbing and some electrical work and uh, then we'll start setting tanks up in there and we'll, we'll build racks and I'm gonna try to detail that video pretty well um, and it'll be a series of videos for for the new fish room build and we'll get into that and uh, but the point of this video was to show you that in one year and with less than five hundred dollars you can set up a working fish room with 20 plus tanks i think i had i actually had technically 25 tanks running in this this small eight by ten room so it doesn't take a lot of space it doesn't take a lot of money it takes a little bit of know-how and whether you already know that or if you're willing to do the research and do some learning ask questions join your club if you don't have a local club, consider starting one if the if there's enough people in your market there. If you're not in a club, but there is one, go, go attend a meeting. Uh, just show up, meet some people. Uh, the, the fish community is great. They're, they always have open arms, and I highly encourage you to get involved in a club. You'll have access to more knowledge and different varieties of fish and inverts and, and equipment um, than you could ever ask for. And if it wasn't for, for me joining my local club, I would never would have had this opportunity to, to acquire some of this equipment and the know-how that I used uh, to build this little room. So again, like I said, it's about an eight by 10 closet. I stacked 25 tanks in there for less than 25 bucks, or less than $500, sorry. $25 would be super impressive. 25 tanks, less than $500, and I bred over 15 varieties of fish and inverts all within a year. So think about what you want to do. Do the work to do the planning. Take, a, take the time to learn. Ask questions, meet people, and most of all, just have fun with it. Every, everybody's fish room is going to be different. And multiple fish rooms that, that one person owns will be different based on uh, what you enjoy, what your goals for that are, and uh, you know, kind of what you want to do with it. If you have any questions, 
feel free to comment down below. I'd love to help you out. And uh, I'm actually going to be asking you guys questions in the next uh, upcoming videos here because I am about to finally get home. And that means not only do I get to see my family, which is great, but I get to work with my fish tanks again. And we're going we're gonna to start this fish room build uh, together. And we'll do, we'll do some live streams and I'll, I'll just post some video updates along the way. But it's going to be a great time. Looking forward to it. Uh, Ed, much, much love. I appreciate all the support. Wouldn't be here without you guys. And, and I am having a lot of fun with this. I really am. I'm meeting some people, learning things. Uh, I'm getting to help people. It's just, it's just great. Uh, I'm so glad to be part of this hobby. Uh, but that's it for now. Until next time, 10 p.m. Eastern, Tuesday night, live stream. Priscilla MK from Swiss Aquatics. It's going to be right here. And we are going to have a great time. Have a good night.